All right. Hello, artists. Thanks so much for joining me today. I think there's a, a bit of an air of excitement today. It's a, it's a different medium, right? It's coffee and tea. I think people are just excited to just play with food, play with drinks. All right, it is, it is one o'clock. We will get started. Uh, my name is Chris. Chris is short for Kristen. Of course, we're here with Artist Palette Durham Region and we're painting tipsy teacups in coffee and tea. Can you believe it? I do like playing with unusual painting materials. So um, I have a video in our watercolor lovers group on making your own pigments with cabbage, a red cabbage. So playing with coffee and tea, that's, that's natural for me. That's kind of normal. I've also painted with um, soy sauce, turmeric, um, jam. I've tried jam in the past. So coffee and tea is pretty tame for me. Uh, feel free to comment in the chat where you guys are from. I'm in London, Ontario, in Canada. So I'm not necessarily in the Durham region, but um, pretty, pretty close. Let's see in the comments here. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining. Hi, Jess. Hello, Cindy and Chris. Chris is for life. Hello, Jennifer and Shirley and Phyllis. Hi, Susan. Good to see you. Hi, Shirley. All right. So I will go over the supplies now. I'm sure there's still a few people um, just, just tuning in, getting set up. So we are on a live video. This is a live feed, but you are able to set the playback back. It is possible, um, even if it's live. And you can even pause. So if you forgot to grab a supply, uh, you just hit pause, go run and grab it, and then unpause and, and join me again. Um, so let's go over the supplies here. I've got lots of stuff in the, in the shot here. Um, let's talk paper. So. Um, even though we're not using like actual watercolor paints, um, I am going to use watercolor paper because the coffee and tea have lots of water in them. So we need something that soaks that up. So I've got the Canson XL watercolor paper. I use it a lot. Um, I always say it's medium quality for a medium price. Of course, there are cheaper options out there and more expensive options. I just I like this one. And it's readily available at lots of places. Even Walmart carries it. Um, I'm going to do quite a big size today. It's 11 by 15. But you can do any size you want. Uh, a 9 by 12 would be a nice, sweet little size. Any, any size, um, even any shape paper. So maybe you don't have a rectangle. Maybe you have a square piece of paper. That's fine, too. So let me set this here for a second. I have a couple of paint brushes. Um, you could really do this with just one paintbrush. You don't need a whole variety of paintbrushes. One would be okay, as long as it has maybe a bit of a pointy tip. This one has a pointier tip, so you can get into like smaller little areas, um, do maybe a little bit of fine lines. So really, I could do this whole thing with just like this one, but I have a smaller one as an option just in case I want to use a second paintbrush. Let's set that there. Um, I have some painter's tape or masking tape. I want a nice crisp white border around mine, but you don't have to have that. If you want to have your painting go right to the edge of your paper, maybe your um, paper is smaller than me, so you want to maximize the surface area of the paper and you want to go right to the edge, go for it. So you don't need to have painter's tape. That's optional. Right here, coffee and tea, the stars of the show. I'm going to be using these um, instant coffee granules. They dissolve really easily. Mine just happens to be decaf. Why waste the good calf stuff? So I'm going to use, I'll probably use about a tablespoon of that. You don't need a lot. And then tea. So I have this wonderful um, Celestial Seasonings Black Cherry Berry Tea. It makes like a nice red tea which I'm gonna use for like these purples. When it dries, it goes purple. Um, but if you don't have like a red tea, you could you can use watercolors. 
You could do coffee plus purple or red watercolor. You don't have to strictly use coffee and tea. Or if you don't want to use tea or watercolors, um, a red wine. Um, this is a, a kind of a special bottle from our wedding. There's only a few of these left. So I'm probably not going to open this one today, but just as an alternative, if you have an open bottle of red wine handy, just pour out like a little, a little tablespoon or two. You don't need a lot. Um, so that's an option. I'm going to put that. I want this to be safe. I'll put it way over here. Okay, uh, we talked to T. Uh, pencil and eraser, any pencil, any eraser, mechanical pencil, regular school pencil. If you have a variety of pencils, like a case or a set of pencils, use like uh, an H pencil, 4H, 2H, that kind of thing, versus a B pencil. Bs are very um, dark and thick, leads, very soft lead. Um, we want the pencil to be kind of invisible. So pencil and eraser. Um, I just have these little, woo, um, I'll make the coffee and tea in these little dishes. You could be mixing that into like a cup or a mug or a bowl, any kind of vessel that can hold your coffee and tea. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, on standby, I have uh, just, I just boiled this water, hot boiled water to mix with our coffee and tea. Put that right there. I've got some pens. So the pen that you choose has to be waterproof because we're going to do the pencil drawing first, then the pen, then the coffee and tea. So these need to be waterproof. So I've got a couple of brands here. Le Pen, uh, technical drawing pens in a variety of sizes. These are waterproof. I use them a lot. Or uh, Sakura Pigma Micron pens are very popular. Got a couple of sizes there. Those are waterproof. Or I've got a... I never know how to pronounce that. S Stetler. Yes, I have a Stetler pen. S Stetler, I think that's how it's said. Permanent waterproof pen. You just need one pen. And then, um, oh, I've got some, some measuring spoons, but you could just eyeball it. Um, and then I also have my standard um, water and paper towel. And I do have a little mini palette here to do some extra mixing in. So if I want to do kind of like a, a lighter wash of the coffee, I could mix it on here with some extra water, let's say. You could use just a plate or a styrofoam from your garbage or something. I think that's all the supplies I have. Um, of course, you can pause this live if you need to go grab something. It is pausable and rewindable if you want to set it back to watch something again, something I said. Lots of people chiming in from where they're from. Awesome. All over the country, all over the continent, really, down in uh, the States. Welcome, everyone. Awesome. OK, let's get the paper ready with our tape, if you want tape. And I do like to take mine out of the, out of the pad. Oh. Uh, you know what, before I prepare my paper, I should prepare my coffee and tea. Well, so I can steep a little, let's say. So let's do, I've got my red tea bag. Where's my water? Maybe like a tablespoon, not too much. Just a bit. Let that kind of marinate. So it's, yeah, see it starts to turn red. Cherry tea, it's delicious to drink too. That lovely red color. So I'll let that kind of simmer there for a sec. And then the coffee granules. Um, maybe I'll get about a tablespoon. Or you can do less. And then not a lot of water. So here's my teaspoon. Let's try that. And then we'll mix it and see what that gives us. So we want it quite thick and we could of course water it down with our water. It's almost like syrupy in its thickness. Yeah, very thick. You probably wouldn't want to drink that, but it smells great. I've got the, the coffee and the cherry smell. 
I just kind of want to dissolve all the granules. Pretty good. Yeah, and as I said, you don't have to use coffee and tea. You could be using just regular watercolors, brown, purple, red, or use regular watercolors and do, uh, you know, a blue cup. Uh, you could do like green, yellow, pink as that funky cup, red polka dots, um, orange stripes. You don't have to go with the color scheme that I'm doing. Okay, I think that's good. Put that there. Okay, now I can prepare my paper while that's kind of steeping. Let's put that over there. Uh, painter's tape, masking tape. Um, sometimes people will use washi tape. Just as long as it's not too, too sticky of a tape. Um, so I'm putting my tape right on the edge here. If you wanted to tape your paper down to the table, you could do that. You could tape your paper, paper to like a board of some kind to help keep it flat up to you. Again, you don't have to have a white border. Uh, don't dilute the wine, Julie. Not yet. As we, as we go, we could dilute it more if we want a kind of a lighter purple, but don't dilute it right off the bat. You sometimes will want that, that strong undiluted. Good question. Oh, hello to Arabelle in Hawaii. That's awesome. There we go. There's my tape. And I just press it lightly on kind of the inner edge is the most important. You don't want things seeping under, but not, not too firmly. We want it to be able to release. Good. So we're going to start with the pencil first to sketch out our, our teacups, and then we'll do the pen. And it could be any shapes and sizes of teacups. You don't have to do the same exact shapes I'm doing. All right, so I like to start with the like the, the biggest one at the bottom. That makes sense. And then we'll stack some teacups in there. So I'm thinking like an oval as like this part of the teacup, like the opening, the opening. And you could do very light, sketchy lines. These don't have to be perfect lines. A very stretched out oval. That's the, the opening of the cup opening of the cup and then make a nice big bowl like a like you're having a little little a big like cappuccino or something something like that and when we do the pen work the pen is all scribbly scribbly pen so this drawing does not have to be perfect I could have lines that are like this if I want as my pencil that's fine does not have to be tidy. So that's the big, the big cup. We want a saucer under this one. So an oval again, coming out from here, coming around. Again, these lines can be scribbly. So that's the, the start of my saucer. Let's give the saucer just a little bit of depth. Something like that. See, messy, messy, sketchy lines. Don't worry about perfection. And I want my saucer to have a little bit of a um, edge, a lip. So I'll just do a line kind of inside there. Like a, like a double line. Well, my lines are very messy, so. It looks like more than a double line, it looks like four or five lines, but a little, little edge, a little lip, a rim, if you will. Same with um, like this big teacup. I want to have a bit of a, a rim here, so I'll kind of bring it double line. 
double line there. We're going to erase this part here so we can set some more, more cups in it. So we don't need this part really anymore. Looks like a soup bowl. So I've got two teacups like kind of nested in each other, nested in this. So I'm going to start with maybe the one that's um, on an angle, this polka dot one. So what kind of an angle do I want? Something like this. So we're going to do the same kind of elongated oval. That's the opening of this teacup. And then we'll tuck it, tuck it into the big bowl. So we just see like, we just see half of it kind of. Teacups come in many shapes and sizes. There's really shallow ones, really deep ones. So yours doesn't have to look exactly like this. All right, I'll also give this one kind of a double line as kind of a rim. And again, we're gonna erase right here to nest in our next one, so. Yeah, that looks good to me. I'm gonna erase here so we can nest in the next one. But Chris, why do we draw the whole oval just to erase half of it? Just to get that nice curvature. By drawing the whole oval, we get the, the nice curve at the front. Just visualize it better. All right, so this one's again kind of a chunkier one, kind of like this one. This one was a little more shallow, but any any size, any shape that you want to do. So this tipsy teacup is going to be, let's go right here. Oval. Nested in there. Yeah, so we see kind of a lot more of this one than say this one, but however yours is stacked is good. And again, I'll give this one a, like a double line for like the lip, the edge. And again, we're going to erase here and nest in the, the sugar bowl. Sugar bowl right in here. And depending on, you know, how big your paper is, maybe you want to nest one more teacup and then the sugar bowl. Maybe if you have a lot of room still, put one more cup in here and then the sugar bowl or whatever you want to do. Okay, sugar bowl, we're, we're kind of seeing like most, if not all of the sugar bowl. Let's go, first I'll do kind of this, this shape first, and then I'll do the oval at top. And the oval. And this time we get to see the whole oval in the final, so we don't need to erase that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. You can tweak anything you want to tweak. You can erase and adjust if you want to, you know, fix the curve of this, um, curve of this a little more. If you want this one to come in more, um, maybe instead of a rounded teacup, you want more of a, a mug straight sides. Maybe you have a favorite teacup that you want to include in this. Let me, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a lip. So a double line for my sugar bowl. Because we'll see the whole, the whole of the upper lip of this sugar bowl. That's good. And look how messy, look how messy and sketchy. That's okay. I encourage it. Um, then let's add handles. So I've got 
different sizes and shapes of handles. Each teacup can be unique. This kind of a shape where it kind of tapers in. This one, it reminds me of ears. So some people have an ear like this with a detached lobe. And then some people have ears like this with an, like a lobe that just attaches right to the head. That's what it reminds me of. Mm, the smell here. I keep getting wafts of smell. Love it. Um, yeah, and your handle, like if you don't want your handle on this side, you can put your handle on this side. Up to you. Thick handle, thin handle. Maybe your handle has carvings on it, uh, roses on it. I don't know. Any kind of square handle. There's mugs with square handles. Something like that. We'll get one on here. If you want, uh, oh yeah, I've got these little curly on the sugar bowl, these little curly cues at the end. Those are cute. This one is more of a, like this. And the sugar bowl, yeah, little cute swirly things. And this one will just kind of tuck it in. So maybe the little curly cue of this one's hidden inside the inside this guy tucked in there. Cute. We're almost done with the sketch. Um, I have a I have a spoon. And weirdly, the spoon is kind of facing the wrong way. I've got the bowl of the spoon outside the sugar. Normally, you know, put your spoon with with the bowl into the sugar. I don't know. I just did that to show that it's a spoon more. But you can draw the normal way with it's just like the handle of the spoon, if you want to do that. Look how messy, messy, messy. Don't worry about being tidy. A uh, couple more things, sugar cubes, sugar cubes. Um, well, I'll just something on the back. So I think most people know how to draw a cube. So it's like that, cubey. Like you, you can start with a square, square, angle, 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 straight, straight, cube. We can do different, different alignments. of cubes. And again, be messy, be sketchy. Put a few in here. And then I've got a two that fell out. I don't know. They fell out somehow. Could be just like half of a cube showing. Corner, little corner of a cube. Four, five, don't need a lot. Don't need a lot. And then, oh yeah, a couple just stray cubes. One, two, whatever you want to do. And I've got one. Oh, maybe I'll do one. This side, this side. Have one over here if you want to balance it out.
Yeah, so that's really all we need to do for the sketch and the pencil. We don't need to say, draw the lines, draw the dots, draw the patterns. We'll just do that with the actual paint itself. So we're done with the pencil. I guess we could put a line for like the table. Like the table surface, let's, let's throw that in there. Okay, now we're done with the pencil. Okay, so get out a pen or two. I'm gonna use, what size? I've got so many different sizes, maybe a point eight. I'm gonna use kind of a bigger pen out of my different sizes. Um, but if you just have like one fine pen, use that, use what you have. But it does have to be waterproof. So a way to test if the pen you is waterproof. Maybe just scribble a little something. Where's my brush? Oh, got to let it dry a little bit. It does, it does require a little bit of dry time. Yeah, on the whole, pretty darn waterproof. Okay, so let's look at this a little closer. Scribbly, messy, random wiggles and squiggles and zigzags and like, what is that? I don't know what that is. I just felt like doing it. And then for darker areas, like shaded areas, just that. here, messy for like shadow. There's no like wrong way to do this. Just have a look there. And if you want to like pause it on this screen and work off of this screen, instead of me rambling on, you can do that. So everything we've just done in pencil, do it over in pen in whatever order you wanna do. And then we can erase um, we could use our eraser to erase the pencil after because I have quite quite a bit of pencil and it's quite dark but I needed to to show you so it is quite dark darker than I would normally do it So I'm just starting off with just like the basic shapes and then I'll add wild scribbles as I go. Yeah, really just don't take this seriously. Even if you, um, you know, you're, you're drawing along here and then you go, whoops, I went onto my cup. That's okay. You're drawing along here and you're, whoa, whoa, went way out the line. That's okay. In fact, if you want to lose even more control, Hold your pen further back. So if you want more control when you're doing paintings, drawing, choke up on the implement you're using. But if you want to lose control and get really scribbly, hold it way back. And then you just, you have no choice. It just gets wild and crazy on its own. Like I'm talking messy. It's 
art. It should be fun and not serious. Go. Let's get my spoon in here. Yeah, my sugar cubes are wonky. That's all right. There, so I've got kind of my basics, everything outlined, and then just go nuts on, you know, I want this a little darker here. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Zigzag, loop the loop. Swirls. A little darker in here. I'm picturing my light source kind of coming from the, the top corner here, top left for me. My light is shining. So if that's the case, maybe this side of my sugar bowl is a little darker. So I'm going to add some wild scribbles there. And then like inside this teacup bowl, that's going to be dark. Might as well scribble in there that's gonna be really dark in there you know if 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 light is shining on this handle this would be light but maybe this part would be dark and we're going to be um painting over this to darken even the scribbles so we'll put darker coffee where the scribbles are lighter where the scribbles aren't Oh, you know what's fun? Hiding your signature in some of the scribbles. Just throw your signature in there a couple times. That'll really help scribbleify the area. Yeah, so the more you scribble continuously in one section, the darker it's going to be. So if I want it really dark, I'll just really go over it a lot. You know, the, the, this cup casts a shadow on its own saucer, so that'll be a little darker here. The saucer itself casts a shadow on the table, so throw some scribbles under that. Even the, even the little sugar cubes make a little shadow underneath and to the right because our, our light is coming this way. So here would be the shadow. And you could add other things. What if you want to add a, a tea bag string coming out of one of the cups? Add a tea bag string. What if you want like a tea bag sitting on the table somewhere or resting in a spoon? You could draw a spoon with a tea bag resting in it anywhere. What if you want, um, I don't know what else you would have on the table. Slice a lemon. You can evolve a slice of lemon somehow. Maybe a little milk pitcher in the background for milk. Add whatever you want. Add a, a phrase on any of the teacups. World's best boss or something like that.
Everyone's going to have a different amount of scribble, different teacups. Everyone's is going to be completely and utterly unique. And that's what we love. We love that. I don't want to see necessarily carbon copies of what I'm doing. I want to see your take on this. And then sometimes I just add random, random scribbles here and there. Just why not? Just oh, put a little something there. A little, just give it a little texture. Let's get some scribbles here. Remember, you can hold your pen way far back to like absolutely lose control. People are going to think you spent hours, but you only spent minutes. Scribbles on the table, sure. Give the table some texture. there. I think I'm almost where I want to be scribble wise. But definitely have some quite intense dark areas, have some kind of medium areas, some just plain white areas with nothing on them. I'm also going to do some dots on my sugar cubes just to give them more of a sugar cubey feel. But for the most part, my sugar cubes are, are just outlined, scribbly outlined. I do want them to stay pretty white. Oh, Sheila, it's okay if you're a little late. You can set the playback of the video to the beginning and watch the whole thing from the beginning. Even though I'm doing this live, you can go back to the beginning. And of course, this video will be on our channel page forever. So even if you, you know, do about half of this and then you get called away immediately after we're done this, it'll be available on our on our page forever. Yes, Kristen, it'll be available forever. That's an unusual way of spelling Kristen. I also spell my name Kristen a little weird. Chris, like C-H-R-I-S and then T-E-N. And you got the Y going on, you got the E. So many variations. Okay, I think I'm kind of where I want to be scribble wise. You might already be there. You might be almost there something like that. And then I'm going to erase, um, where'd it go? I'm going to erase the pencil that's visible. If you did your drawing very lightly, you might not even need to do any erasing. And even if some is still visible in the final uh, image, that's okay.
Yeah, my coffee, my tea is nice and steeped. Okay, where else? A little bit over here. Just like all those little bits, those little bits. Okay, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, and let's say you erased your pencil and you realized, oh, maybe I didn't have enough scribble here. Throw in a little bit more. that yeah the sugar cubes are going to remain white so definitely get all that eraser or eraser all that pencil out of your sugar cubes for sure all right so maybe you're not quite there with me hit pause and then finish your scribbling erasing and then unpause and Keep going along. Okay. Let's put this there. So I've got my thick instant coffee. Tablespoon of granules and a teaspoon of water. Nice and thick. Got my tea. Tea bag with, what is that? Maybe a teaspoon or two of water or yeah, hot boiled water. So it's quite concentrated, smells delicious. And then, yeah, we could do some extra mixing in a plate or palette, like for lighter brown, lighter purple. Get out of here. All right, I would like to start with probably the lighter tones of brown in let's say the the biggest the biggest teacup so i've got uh I've got this brush you could use smaller brush bigger brush depending on size of your paper let's get a little dollop of this coffee well, let's bring it over here that's why i have emergency tissues i don't want coffee in my tea there we go beauty so I've got a little coffee here, but I want to dilute it with water, more water to make it a lighter brown. You could also use soy sauce if you don't have instant coffee. Okay, so the bottom teacup, I do leave a bit of white. There's a strip of white right here. So I don't want to put any coffee there, but on this part and this part, light brown. And it acts just like watercolor. So where will I have my white? Maybe like here? Maybe, oh, maybe I can go over here. Wherever you decide, it doesn't have to be in the center. It could be a little to the left, a little to the right. Light brown coffee. And sometimes I even go outside the lines. Like I went way up the line here, that's okay. Even if I accidentally, whoops, oh, oh, what a big mistake that is. It's not a mistake. It's a happy accident. We're gonna tie that in with the background. So yeah, don't worry if you, you know, oh, oh, I made a mistake. Not a big deal. This is a very free form painting. I do wanna have some brown in my saucer. But I do want to leave some white. I'll probably leave white along the edge, like that um, that lip. 
but I'll have some of this lighter brown on the underside here. And I'll put some in this part and in this part. There we go. But I'm kind of avoiding that, that lip here. Maybe the, the light is coming in, hitting that lip, making it nice and bright. So I'll just leave it white. There's some coffee there. Still the light version. Oh yeah, and if you get like accidental little, little drops, like if you, you know, you're bringing your brush over and then you accidentally, oops, you accidentally drip. Oh no, not a problem. We're gonna purposely add drips later. So, you know, have accidental spills. Whoops, whoopsie. I'm gonna paint my, this handle, the lighter shade of brown. There we go. And I'll add, I'll add some dark brown to that later for shading. There we go. What else would I like light brown? Um, oh, maybe, so I've got this kind of a funky modern teacup here with these cool shapes and white gaps. You could do it like that with these cool shapes. You could do it stripey this way, stripey that way. Uh, more squared off shapes, whatever kind of arrangement of shapes and gaps that you want to do. It could be that you're using actual watercolors and you want to do blue here, purple here, pink here. Go for it. Yellow handle, whatever you want to do. I'm going to make a light brown shape like this. This one I'll do. Extra water there. So yeah, just make it up. I mean, if you do want to pencil it out with a pencil, you can, but I'm just going to go for it. Maybe like this. Light brown. We're going to be adding some dark brown later, some tea later. It's a nice blocky shape. What else do I want? Light brown. Maybe I'll do a little light brown on, on this handle. On that handle. And yeah, you could leave, you could leave a bit of a white, a little white gap along the edge there for like a highlight. Here we go. Again, it's not a big deal if you go out of your line. So look at this. Look how not in my line I am. Oops. Oops, I went out my line. Yeah, and as it dries, it's going to behave sort of like watercolors in that there's areas that will puddle and pool and end up being darker. A little bit darker there. Puddles and pools. Um, blooms and cauliflowers will happen, darker edges. We've got kind of like a dark edge right here happening. That's okay. What else do I want? Light brown. I think that's it for the light brown for now, but we can definitely get some light brown going in the background later. Um, I guess if you wanted to do a little bit of light brown, maybe your lightest brown, maybe water it down even more. The wateriest possible. Um, a little bit on um, maybe the shaded side of your sugar cubes. So if my light is coming from here, maybe this sugar cube has a little tiny bit of light brown right there. Maybe this sugar cube has light brown here. Just like a little bit here and there. Tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm thinking these guys down here, light is coming here. Maybe this side is light brown. Just the lightest brown you could make over here. Barely anything there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, one thing I do want to do, so 
this line is pretty harsh and stark right now between the white and the brown. So rinse out your brush completely, rinse it out. So it's just water on my brush. And I just want to kind of dilute that and to soften it a little bit, soften that harsh edge with just water on my brush. It's a little less harsh and it's okay if some of the brown goes towards the white from both sides, as long as it's just lighter, it doesn't have to be white, white, white. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's do maybe a, a, some tea. We'll get some tea involved here. Rinse out my brush. Here's my tea. So yeah, I just kind of mash my brush into the tea bag here. Just mash it. Smush it. Um, so I'm thinking polka dots on this one, but maybe you have a different pattern in mind. Maybe you want to do polka dots on this one instead and stripes on this one or a solid color here and polka dots up there, whatever you want to do. Yeah, so my tea is a cherry tea, so it's reddish. There's, there's teas out there that are greenish orange-ish. You can use one of those today or in future. One day you're going to be drinking a cup of tea. You'll look at the color and be like, oh my gosh, I really want to paint with this tea. And then you'll do it. Polka dots, half a polka dot. It could be stripey. Uh, flowers, you do some little flowers that'll be cute. Yeah, and it's okay if your paper might start um, warping, wiggling, bumps and valleys happening. With the very best paper, you still get a little bit of warping. So mine's kind of bumping up and some of my tea is kind of concentrating down here because it's going downhill, this one. So it's okay if there's like a dark patch and a lighter patch that's gonna dry and form like an interesting shape, cauliflower. It's not a mistake, that is that is the nature of watercolor. Maybe you've never tried watercolor before and this is what's gonna bring you to it. Playing around with coffee and tea. Thank you so much guys for all the likes on the video. That's very encouraging. And thanks for tuning in live with me. It's, it's so nice to have lots of people chat and chiming in from all over the continent, all over the world. So I've done quite big polka dots. I like the look of big polka dots. Yours could be smaller. You could have a variety of sizes. And mine aren't all the exact same size either. I'm doing my best to keep them the same size, but it is not perfect. Yeah, I have left my like my edge, my rim, plain white. That's just me. If you want to put some polka dots on that too, you can. If you want your bowl to be polka dotty and your handle to be solid, go for it. Or a different color. Yeah. There we go. So I'm, I'm happy with my polka dot arrangement there. I like Jen's comment about coloring outside the lines. It's 
Sometimes it's intentional. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, I do want to have some of this uh, purpley red. Yeah, look at the difference. This is like a reddish tone. But when it dries, it'll transform into this purplish tone. It's very cool to see. So I wonder what... I, I haven't painted with wine in a long time, but I have in the past. I'm pretty sure it also does a color shift as it dries too. All right, let's do a shape on my kind of funky funky geometry cup here. I'm going to do, I'm mixing it up. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go across. Kind of want a different shape. This is more of a triangle going this way. This is cross any kind of composition you want to do. And you don't even have to leave, if you don't want to leave a white gap and you want to have the colors just butting up against each other, go for it. If your brown is still wet, maybe hold off a little bit if you want them to touch. Um, but even if it is wet and some of the, the red gets into the brown, that's a cool look. Maybe you want that on purpose. Is anyone getting Alice in Wonderland vibes? I have some paintings to show you later for upcoming events and you're gonna really enjoy uh, my next upcoming free event. It kind of ties in with this one a little bit. Maybe some of you already seen the, uh, the event or seen the YouTube tease. It's Alice in Wonderland theme. Um, I do want to have my sugar bowl stripey, but if you want to do maybe checkerboard, maybe um, any pattern you want to do on your sugar bowl. And because the sugar bowl is like a 3D shape and it's curved, the stripes should sort of curve with that curve any any wideness you want to do could be wide thin wide thin maybe you want to do a plaid Solid color, doesn't have to be stripey. The red and the white um, reminds me of like back in the, the old days where you would change into your bathing costume at the beach and they had those like red and white stripy tents to change into your bathing costume. That's what this reminds me of when I see red and white stripes. You know what I mean. It's little tent things. Uh, stripes on my handles, yes. Or solid handle. Yeah, and I'm able to do kind of smaller areas with this big fat brush because it has a pointy tip. So I'm not really using the whole brush. I'm just using the tip of it to do smaller areas like this. Let's say you wanted a lighter, like lighter purple, darker purple. You could do just 100% proof with a T for one stripe. And then if you want a lighter stripe, mix it with some more water. You can alternate dark light, dark light as an option. Oh, 
again, don't worry if you go outside the lines, if you're like, oops, whoops, oh no. That's part of the background now. Again, I am gonna leave my like rim white, but if you wanted to paint that red, purple, be a colored edge, absolutely, if you want to. Yeah, that looks good. Where else would I like some red right now? I mean, we're going to definitely have some in the background, but um, I think that's good for now for me. Yeah, that looks good. Give my little tea brush a rinse. We'll go back to the coffee and we'll add darker tones of brown with coffee. Again, if, uh, if you want to pause, to catch up, take a break, you can, you have, you have that ability. Yeah, mine's definitely like bumping, there's valleys, it's kind of pooling in the valley, but yeah, you can even bend it, bend it, ooh, even like tilt your page and like paint will run and move and flow. If you want to do weird things with it. Okay. Yeah, mine's, mine's like a big bowl right now. <laughs> Not a problem. When it dries, you can press it in a book, put it in an art portfolio. That's where I keep all of my paper artwork in a like a portfolio with clear plastic sleeves. Those are so handy. All right, a darker shade of brown is what we're gonna do next. So let's see what, how is just 100% proof, let's see. I might have to tone it down. Um, yeah, that's not bad, that's nice and rich. If yours is darker than mine and you wanna tone it down with a little water, you can do that. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, so the darker shaded areas. So we're about to scribble, throw some of this nice dark brown. I'm gonna do some like stripies of brown on my cup, on my light brown areas. Here's a stripe. I'm kind of following the curve still. Keep in mind that is a curved object. Any amount, any amount that you want to do. It could be messy, sketchy, blobby. I'll definitely get some of this nice dark brown on my handle here. Yeah, think about where your shadows are. Nice dark brown on my saucer. Underneath my cup. Maybe just under, just under the lip of the saucer. And mine's messy. Look, it's just in across, thick there, thinner there, lumpy, bumpy. Let's get some brown right under here for shading, shadowing under the saucer. Under my little 
sugar cubes. Messy, messy, messy. Mm, I've got like a nice brown patch here, finishing up my geometric teacup. I do want to have um, some darker brown on here because like this is nestled in here, so it might be a little bit darker kind of along here. Maybe a little darker on maybe this handle. Think about where the light's coming from. Light's coming here. So a little darker right, right on the inside curve. Right in there. Again, messy. I've got some of my brown is going onto my red. Bleeding a little bit. That's fine. Wave it off. Um, yeah, even um, like this spotty teacup, I do want some shadow on here. So where I've got all these messy scribbles, let's put some brown. Just to even darken, darken that teacup. Even right on top of your red polka dots. And the brown and the red will combine, do something weird, and that's fine. Mm, okay, our sugar bowl, same kind of thing. It's a little shadowy here. It's nestled into another cup, so there would be some darker brown. Nestled in here, and you can soften the edge if you um, if you want to rinse off your brush and then soften this edge with water. You could do that. And the red is smudging and smearing. That's fine. A little softer with a little water. Where else? Um, I've got some lovely dark brown here. So like the negative space above the sugar cubes, nice and dark here, right in there. Let's toss some of that in here. A nice contrast against the white sugar cubes. Where else? Oh, my little spoon. My little spoon needs a little, I've got some dark kind of inside the bowl. Just a little brush stroke or two, a little smear in the bowl. And then I've got a little bit of lighter brown like on the outside part of the bowl. Just a stroke, maybe a little on the handle. A little smear, a little smudge. That's all it really needs. 
Where else would I like a little dark brown? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. That. that dry for a few minutes um, and you guys can catch up to where I'm at. Uh, while that's drying a little bit, I'll show you some upcoming events with me. If you uh, like my style of art, style of, of hosting, of teaching, maybe you wanna tune into a future event with me. So let me, I'll start with the one that I was alluding to with the Alice in Wonderland kind of theme. Where is it? So this one is coming up uh, March 17th. So that's St. Patrick's Day. It's for free on YouTube Live. Oh, dropping things. Alice Laments. This will be YouTube Live right where we are right now. It is a scribbly drawing again. Look at all the scribbles. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Scribbles and watercolor. So in this one, I use actual watercolors. So if you're enjoying the coffee and tea and you've never tried watercolor before, this is the natural next step. Uh, so Alice Laments, free on YouTube Live on St. Patrick's Day. So if you're not going out, join me. And this will be available forever after that if you wanna catch it the next day or any time. And um, we do have a traceable outline for this one. So this one was easier in that you could just sketch it freehand. This one a little bit more complicated. So I do have the link to the printable outline uh, in that event, in the description of the event. So you can print that beforehand and trace Alice. And then, um, yeah, the wording you could trace too, but it doesn't have to be like this close to her. You could trace it further away from her. All right, so that one's the next free one. Dun, dun, dun. What I'm to show you next. Oh yeah, we're talking St. Patrick's Day. So let's look at some St. Patrick's Day content that's coming up. Okay, so this one is March 3rd. It's an acrylic. Acrylic on canvas, uh, a pub sign. I've used Terry's Irish Pub is the name of my pub, but you could do um, whatever you want. Gwen's. Gwen's place, whatever title you want on your pub sign, any any date of establishment. Um, we do kind of like a lovely barn board background, which I love, and then and then whatever the title of your pub is. So this event is a paid event on Zoom. Tickets on our website. Everyone who buys a ticket also gets the full recording to access forever. So even if you can't make that particular date for the Zoom, you have access to the recording to do it at your own pace. So that's March 3rd on Zoom. And then another uh, Zoom event for St. Patrick's Day. Tickets on our website. Um, I called it the wearing of the green. So like a little, kind of like a leprechaun girl. And this is like a watercolor collage. So if you're looking at these clovers and thinking, wow, they look really 3D, it's because they are. We cut them out and put them on this painting, this drawing with a little glue. So watercolor, drawing, and collage, just like a three in one. So the tickets are on our Zoom, or sorry, on our Zoom, on our website. Yeah, again, scribbly, scribbly drawing. It's very forgiving. I'm kind of on a scribbly drawing kick right now. It's just so forgiving. So if you want to join me for that one, it is on March 10th. March 10th. Um, let me show you. Um, show you three more things. So, so I showed you. So we're on a free event right now. I showed you the Alice free event. The next next free event with me um, is April 7th, April 7th. You're gonna love this. It's acrylic on a canvas. Dinobots following me on the YouTube live for a bit. 
I have a butts series that's ongoing. We've done safari butts. We've done barnyard butts. We've done frosty butts. We've done woodland butts. Dino butts is next. Kids are going to get a real big kick out of this. Adults too. Isn't that hilarious? So this one's free on April 7th. Yeah, we're booking all the way into April already. Join me for that. And if you want to check out some of the other butts videos, those are all on our YouTube channel already. Already ready. You could do a butts painting tonight. And I'll show you two more things. So if you're enjoying um, watercolor or, well, pseudo watercolor and you want to try out some more watercolor, um, this one is a video that we already have on our website. You can purchase any of our past recordings all the way back to the very beginning. So this event has already passed, but you can still get the recording. It's I Chihuahua in watercolor. And you get a tracer for that. And uh, if you want to try that one, that's on our website under video recordings. Colorful, fun, loose. Again, you don't have to worry about staying in the lines. You can get messy and fun with it. Bright colors. I Chihuahua, video recordings on our website. And then maybe you're enjoying the drawing aspect of this event. And if you want to get into more of the scribble drawing, this one uh, also has passed, but you can still get the video recording on our website. Library Love in pen. And it's scribble drawing. Yeah, if you've been enjoying the scribbliness of this, we get all those different gray tones and black tones with scribbles. Library Love, uh, video recording on our website. Um, do I have anything else to show you? No, no, I think we're good. Now mine is still very wet, very, very wet. <clears throat> um, I might take a little tissue, if you have a tissue nearby or a paper towel, and you want to just lightly soak up any like really big puddles that are going to take a long time to dry. You just dab it lightly. But it's okay if this is still a little wet as we do some of the background because if some of like say this bleeds into the background, not a big deal because we're going to add brown and the purpley red in the background anyway. Just if you have really deep puddles and it's kind of warping this will just help it a little. Not going to take a lot up, just a little. And it's kind of like a sticky, glossy finish. When it's fully dry, it's a little sticky, a little glossy. You can kind of see the gloss there. I don't know if there's maybe some sugar content in the, in the coffee granules, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, I'm, I'm happy with that. And you can kind of see my red is starting to turn purpley. It's more purpley there as it dries. Yeah, this is definitely purpley. It's definitely shifting. Okay, uh, let's put that somewhere. Whoops, my tape is coming up. So we're gonna fill in some of our background. If your tape is starting to come up a little bit, just kind of press it lightly down again. There you go. So for mine, the table I kind of fully filled in all the way to my tape versus my background, I kind of left it as a loose organic edge. If you prefer to have this background go all the way to your tape, go for it, go for it. Maybe do this lighter and this darker as an option. I'm going to get some water here. I'm going to start with, let's start with purple, the T. The T. And really just have fun blobbing it around, scribbling it around, wherever you want, like literal scribbles and blobs. If a little of the teacup bleeds into the background, that's all right. 
if you want to use watercolor and fill in the background, uh, blue, yellow, could be mixed media. You could paint a, a pattern in the background. What if this is set against some wallpaper and you want a pattern in the background? Go for it. Kind of any, any in, anywhere, everywhere, wherever I feel like. There's some red blobbed around. That's good. I'll, I'll blob some around on the, the table or whatever surface this is. I mean, it makes sense if it's a table, not the ground. Why would you stack teacups on a ground? Tape, why? Why you know? Stay down. I'm going to hold you down. So when I'm close to my tape, I'm trying not to shove paint under the tape. So if I want to put some um, tea here, I'm not going to go in this direction and shove it under. I'm going to go in this direction and paint like from the tape onto the paper this way. So it's glancing over the tape, not being shoved under. Yeah, there's some purple kind of everywhere. Let's get some brown going. Um, I might mix some more of the lighter brown. So some coffee with some water. Dab some of that around. And then I'll also do some dark brown too. It could be on top of your tea, next to your tea, anywhere you want to put it. Don't forget to get inside of your handles, inside the teacup handles, get in there. Some of that. I'm even going to dabble in some water. Just rinse out your brush completely. Now there's just water in my brush. Dab around some water. Could be on top of your tea and coffee. It could be around the edges to kind of soften the edges. Dab, dab, dab. Soften some of these edges. And my paper is definitely warping and wibbling. Very normal. The better quality paper will, will be less warpy, but I'm happy with this. Okay, there's some, there's some water. I'm gonna get some of more of my table filled in here. Watch those sugar cubes. I want the sugar cubes to stay white. There we go. So yeah, most of my table is filled in. If there's a few white gaps in your table, that's fine. That's good. So I do want that to dry a little bit before we add, let's say some darker browns and some splats. I just love splats. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a theme for me, <laughs> the splats. So you got the, the splats in this one. What else do I got the splats in? Oh, the Aichihuahua, very splatty. And it's not, it's not for everyone. If you don't wanna do the splats, you don't have to. You don't have to. Let's let that dry a little bit. Again, if you have any really deep puddles, get your tissue, get a corner of your tissue, 
dab it a little. It's gonna dry a little faster, a little more even. And you could make some cool shapes with, with the actual dabbing. Make that part of the texture. Cool texture. Make sure you get in your handles. Get inside your handles. Don't forget those. Oh, I forgot one. As I said it, I realized. There we go. Let me even tidy up. I've got all this mess around here. I can tidy that up too. And the tape pull is so satisfying at the end. Get that crisp white border. Mm. Love that part. All right, let's let that dry a bit. Um, I want to talk to you about our Watercolor Lovers Facebook group by Artist Palette Germ Region. We also have a Artist Palette painting slash drawing support group plus free events. We have two, um, you know, Artist Palette Facebook groups. Um, shall I I'll post the, um, let me get the links. I'll put them in the, in the chat. <clears throat> Let's find those links for you. Very um, supportive groups. We're all beginners. Copy. Paste. So in the chat there, I put, that's the link for the Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. And let me get the other one. Copy. Paste. Anita says she likes the Dino Butts. I know I love the, I love just the whole butt series. That series is not gonna end anytime soon, let's say that. Um, so in the chat there, I put the link to both the groups. Feel free to join both or either, or I won't be offended if you, if you don't join any of those groups. Just a nice, um, smaller community, very supportive. You're gonna get lots of encouragement. Um, in the Watercolor Lovers group, I post a weekly, I call it, Watercolor Wednesday. So every Wednesday I post a, a new video for free of a like kind of a mini painting slash watercolor exercise that you can do. And then, uh, yeah, in the other group, we'll, we'll remind you of all the free events coming up. We love seeing your paintings in there. It's a great little group. It's drying, it's drying slowly. Um, what else can I show you? I mean, I could show you some examples of, of watercolor Wednesdays. What do I have here? What is handy? Oh yeah, we did, um, if you wanna try this sweet little cactus, um, I did embellish it a little with pens, but in the video you see me do the actual watercolor work and then after I added some more pen work, like a cactus with hearts. That's one of the Watercolor Wednesday videos that's already in that group posted. Oh yeah, last week, like Wednesday, we did, <laughs> I call him Snowclops. It's a Cyclops snowman. I saw a snowman like this with one eye built by some kids at a school. And I was just like, I want to paint that. So I go through how to paint this snow clops. And there's lots more in there. Lots more watercolor Wednesdays. Does smell like a coffee shop, doesn't it? We're only missing some donuts. Whoops. Crash. Okay. The little dryer. 
looking. Yeah, I'm, I think I'll add a little bit of dark brown in my background, on my table. If yours is still like really, really, really wet, you just hold off a little bit. So again, anywhere, anywhere you want, scribbles and blobs. It's gonna blend with some of the other colors you have down. Zigzags, patches, shapes, blobs. Where else? Yeah, I like marks in little corners and things. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm going to get a little bit down here, a little more down here. Yeah, and look at your painting from a distance. So maybe stand up, look at it from afar, and then decide, oh, do I need, need more darks on this side or there? Even on your cups, you can go back and add more darkness on some of your cups, which I think I might do for my uh, sugar bowl. My sugar bowl's looking kind of light right in here. So let's darken that a bit because things dry lighter than than they were before. Yeah, looking at it from afar gets you a different perspective. Barbara from Port Hope. Good. I'm glad you're inspired to get back into painting. This is just the perfect thing. Just messing around with coffee and tea. It's not serious. Splats and splatters. I just love splatting. Um, if you want your splats and splatters to be very crisp and not blurred in any way, let this dry completely then do your splats and splatters. But if you're okay with some of your splats being a little blurry because they'll land on some of the wet bits, then you can go ahead and do it um, right away. I'm gonna do it right away just to show you the different methods that I use. Yeah, I've got some of the purple, some of the brown. So I'll show you like three ways to do it and you can decide which one of those ways is, is the right way for you. It does help to have a kind of a brush to hold more painty water in. I'm gonna grab some, I'll grab some tea. I'll grab some tea first. So I'm just gonna load up my brush with a bunch of tea, tea water. So a couple ways to do splats. You can hit your paintbrush on your finger or you can hit your paintbrush on like another paintbrush. Hit my own finger. And it's okay if they land on the teacups, on the background, on the table, on the sugar cubes. Just let them land where they want. So this is kind of like a finer mist, smaller splats. Do as many as you want or as little. Yeah, very fine little dots. Little dots. Okay. If you want slightly bigger splats, um, I'm gonna use the dark brown. Load up my brush. Whoa, that's really loaded, too loaded. Um, kind of similar, but we're not gonna smack our finger. We're just gonna hurl the brush towards the paper and then stop short. So it's a little more wild, like clear away anything that you don't want absolutely covered. But this should wipe off, wipe off my table with you know, damp rag. Let's, I'm gonna move this out of the way. 
Let's just move that. This is a little more wild. I'm hurling my brush at the page. And you're going to get bigger splats, maybe some curves and shapes and things. And you could, you know, go from different angles, different directions. There's definitely some going on my table. I'm not worried. And you can kind of aim, but not really. Okay, do as you want. Yeah, like I'm flicking a magic wand. That's good. I think that's a, a good amount. And then there's one more way. Um, I didn't really do it in this one, but if you want really big splats, like big fat push, drops, I'll show you that. I'm going to use, I guess I got to use the dark so it shows up. So, well, that's really loaded. It's loaded with the coffee. I'm going to go up high, maybe like two feet high. And then I'm going to physically, physically pinch the bristles. And you can kind of aim where you want it to fall. If you're a good judge of where you're at. So I'm going to go way up high and squeeze if you want big ones. Oh yeah, I'm just making a big old mess. And then you know, there's coffee on my hands. Flick it. Flick it on there. Clean myself up. Yeah, Linda, I know who you mean, painting with coffee. I actually think her name is Linda, but she does these like coffee angels, I think she calls them. There we go. So yeah, if you want your splats and drips to be more crisp and not blurred into like the background, wait till this is dry and then do some splats. Yeah, so some of my splats might've landed in like the wet bits and got kind of lost. Oh, it's a mess. This is a whole mess here. I gotta clean that up. Um, I'm going to sign it. You can sign with your pen or you can sign with um, the coffee or the tea, up to you. Sometimes I like to hide my initials kind of close to the drawing. Let's get in here, this part's dry. You can put the year, you can put the date. Um, I love when kids will sign like their age, like Chris, age 11. That's super cute. And then I'm going to do my tape pull now to show you. But wait, wait till yours is dry to do the tape pull. We don't want any bleedy accidents. I'm nervous. I have such a lot of wet stuff. But when you pull your tape, do it. Um, slowly and carefully. If you start just yanking it off, you might tear some of the paper. But it's super satisfying. Oh, see, that's really deep puddle there. I'm going to be careful. Careful. Where am I going to put this? Relatively painless, that one. Okay, that one turned out pretty good, but different from this one. I can never make the same exact painting twice. It's always little differences. And yours is gonna be different from mine. And I would love to see it. There we go, there's the two there. Um, earlier in the chat, I saw a question about uh, tipping. Yeah, I do love getting little tips to show your appreciation if you wish no pressure of course um so in the description of this video is a paypal link i also have it 
written down right here. I'll put it, I'll put it right there. Um, PayPal.me slash Kristen Artist, or if you don't have PayPal, um, eTransfer, Kristen Artist at hotmail.com. Much appreciated. All the tips go right supplies so I can keep doing free events for you guys. Even if you want to email me a photo, go for it. Would love it. Uh, but otherwise, post your photos in our, our groups, Watercolor Lovers and the uh, Painting Drawing Support Group. I'd love to see it. Love, love, love. Any questions for me, guys? You can type a question in the chat there. Um, ask email me a question. Go for it. Why not? Um, yeah, questions about this, questions about upcoming events. Um, do you want me to show you any of the brands that I used again? There's that tea. Celestial Seasonings Black Cherry Berry Tea is what I used today. The pens that I like to use, the Micron, Pigma Micron by Sakura. Those are the ones I like. I've got also got the Le Pen. Those are waterproof. Any questions at all? You're welcome, Linda. Anne is loving it. I'm loving it that you're loving this. seeing any questions that's okay that is all right uh like and subscribe of course and then you'll get notifications for our upcoming free live videos check out our facebook page artist palette durham region there's loads of free events posted and our zoom events check out our website artistpalettedurham.com all of our video recordings from past events are on there. You can get a, a, I think it's called a platinum membership to our website. You get a, a discount on all of our, all of our stuff. If you become a member, you're welcome. Kitty and Krista and Kathy. It was a really fun event, very freeing and loose and not serious in the least. Right. That's what I love about this. All right, well, I'm not seeing too many questions rolling in. Have a good rest of your weekend. Have a good uh, rest of your month. We'll see you in March for some free March events. Happy painting, you guys. Bye, artists.